Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I'm here today with Susan. Susan is actually a colleague of mine from Matrix and um, I've been doing it here for quite some time and I um, often ask if I can have people come in and have their hair done that are my age, which is 40. I think you're not quite 40 yet. <laughs> um, but here we are and um, Susan is um, going to have a big change today. So she showed me a reference with her sort of like a, what she's aspiring to get to. And we had a discussion about um, that. So the discussion involved um, cutting her hair shorter because she feels that it's, it sits nicer because she wants to encourage the curl. Then she showed me this beautiful pastel pink with, with like, like strawberry blonde with pink. Um, and then we said, well, if curl's important and we go on lighten hair like that, that might sort of counteract each other. So we decided to stick with the uh, chocolate base maybe smudge and hide some of those little white ones that are coming through i found a couple on my head the other day that's what having an 11 year old will do and um then where we've got existing highlights we're probably going to cut those out so i'm going to go back and put some more and we're going to try and make them a bit punchy and fun i think also with uh, susan's base color we can spice it up a little bit as well it doesn't have to just be like you know like natural sort of um base colors but we want to do something that obviously has some synergy with the highlights so um because we're going to make it a fair bit shorter there's no point coloring here we're going to cut off so we're going to actually do a haircut first today which is unusual um, so we're going to cut a hair and then once we've done that we're going to dry it off and we'll see how curly it is and then we'll uh, decide on color placement and then we'll get stuck into that you excited Very excited. it's a big change to tell your husband no <laughs> he's coming no, home. <laughs> he's coming home to a new wife tonight <laughs> i'm going to head out the back mix up some color and you'll see me oh no we're going to go over to the base and do a shampoo um, and then we'll come back we'll start the haircut thanks so we're back from the basin, we've prepped the hair. We're going to start with our length. So it's going to be well above the shoulders. Um, for this particular haircut, I'm not going to actually cut it into the neck. We're going to rely on layering. So I want to start with some strength in the baseline because that's really good when we want to do wash and wear. Um, and then we're going to try and encourage the um, curl with some layering, but we'll get started with the base shape. Starting with just some basic sectioning guys. So just to keep the hair away, I always um, keep the front away. I always um, section the back where the head starts to round, just because you can see that this hair is growing into the back. You don't want to cut hair into the back that's not uh, growing into the back because straight away when you pull it back, you're going to get a weight line here. Other things I like to talk about is starting with a, uh, a forward head position so that if you're going to hold the hair between your fingers when you cut it, we don't put gradu well, unnecessary graduation on the ends. Um, if you're going to cut on the skin, that's not as necessary because the, the neck actually goes in. So when you push the hair against the neck and I cut it, that's because it didn't ask you. Does that happen to you? Siri's just like always interrupting me. Um, so when you actually scoop the hair in, it's actually um, back in and not a natural fall. But as soon as you hold the hair like out from the uh, natural fall, you are getting um, graduation. So that's why I just dip the chin just a little bit. Okay, so our baseline's done. And so if I stretch this down and then we loosen this, you can actually see how much that jumps up and it's absolutely encouraged the wave. Um, what we do now is we continue to bring this hair into the back, uh, into the baseline until it's all combed from the front to the back. And then once we've done that, that's gonna give us that really beautiful sort of like uh, gentle square um, length coming towards the front. And then if we need to adjust that wheel. So I'm gonna continue to go through here and um, keep um, taking this length off until we're done. I heard you calling, I saw your sleepless face and I felt hard. I guess I'm falling for you, girl, I can reach the stars. Oh, the nights when you couldn't sleep, I was there carrying more your arm. Shooting at the demons, see your dreams, making them more fun. Okay, so our baseline's done. What we're gonna do now is I'll spin Susan around. So you can actually, let me leave it this way for a bit so I'm making you dizzy. 
So you can see that that's definitely um, starting to see that wave coming out there. And when I lay this, this will absolutely go curly. All I want to do now is, and as I mentioned to you, I brought all the hair back and I cut it square. So that leaves it slightly longer towards the front. But sometimes it can be a little bit too long towards the front. So what I'm going to do is I get spin Susan this way. And if you could just look over your left shoulder, that would be great. Now what I'm going to do is it allows me to adjust the length over a shoulder without running into a shoulder. Um, so just get ahead to turn slightly. And I'm going to leave it a little bit longer towards the front, but I don't want it like really long towards the front. I just think that those sort of shapes are a little bit dated. Um, I just want to have some length here so we can, you know, Susan might want to blow dry, she might want to use a, an iron or a, or a curling one and curl it um, and use a thermal styling tool. And you need a little bit of length to do that. Um, and I also want it to be a little bit longer and softer in the front. So um, this I like to do between my fingers. And then we just bring this down to meet it. And you can see we just take that little edge off there. Just cross check the hair coming into the back. That's good. And now you can see, just gives that nice little drop towards the front. Let's move back this way a bit more. Yep. It's a beautiful day here today. I've had some pretty crazy, crazy weather actually. Uh, those people are watching from North America. I mean, you've had some wild winter weather over there. I've been seeing on CNN and other international news agencies, so stay safe wherever you are, especially on the East Coast. Okay, so now we just check balance, make sure it's the same on both sides. Just head straight for me, gorgeous. Perfect. All right, now let's do some layering. So we're going to start first with trying to create some shape in here that is going to like try and release some of that movement. Simple symmetrical parting and back to the same sectioning that we started our baseline with. Purpose of this layering is, yes, to give it some shape, but it's also to release curl. And if you want that to happen or movement, you actually have to make sure you get the right angle. I want to start with here so you can see where my section actually will be. So it's a very lean rectangle section, you can see that. I'm just going to come out in like a rectangle. So we're literally just going to come out like this. We're going to cut square. Let's take this corner off. If the hair falls out underneath, then it's not long enough to be in there, you leave it. And I'm starting with just what I would say the minimum to come off there to create some movement on the ends. And then if we want to actually do more, we can. It's always easier to make the shape more elaborate than to shoot too far too quick. And then all of a sudden you've gone past that point, which then makes the hair short or shorter than what you wanted and you can no longer achieve the shape you want. So let's spin back this way. You can see that that's actually has made a big difference to the amount of um, movement there is in there. You can see it's really starting to go curly. Okay, let's have a look now. Oh yeah, that's really um, created some nice movement through there. And by allowing the ends to drop out like I did, you don't compromise um, the weight on the end. So what it would allow us to do, say Susan comes back next time, which I hope she does, and she says, um, let's do something else. What I can actually do then is go and, in, and uh, introduce some graduation and still we have hair to play with. So I guess it's all about thinking about what could options could I possibly offer for change next time. Um, I don't want to put Susie in a place where she's like, oh, look, it wasn't my favourite one. You know, what can we do? Then you're like, oh, well, I've got to grow it out for a bit. Because you don't want people to be in a position where they feel like they have to grow your hair, their hair out. So continuing that all through the sides, we bring the hair into the back until we run out of hair and then we'll be done. 
with this shape. Just want to make sure that we don't um, forget to over-direct the hair to the back. Same principle as when we're cutting the, the baseline. The other reason why it's important to do this is there's no hair growing out of the side of Susan's neck. So if we don't over-direct it here, you're going to end up with a hole there because there's no hair there. I'm just going to keep doing this until I run out of hair. Repeat on the other side and then we'll move on to do the um, shape around the front. sides are done now. So what we want to do is we want to meet them up in the middle and we're going to use some increased layering. And what this is going to do is just knock the corner out on the side a little bit so we don't have too much weight on the jawline. So I just want to take that little bit of a point off the top and then we're going to increase the hair back to that on both sides. Something to be mindful of if you're doing this on someone who wears a side part um, you want to use the side part as your axis of symmetry. Um, if you um, are going to move the part around, then like, like me, I do them in the middle because it allows flexibility with styling. And then if somebody wants to you know, part their hair on the side, they can move it around. Or um, when I get to shape in the front, I put into the part where it's going to be and I just shape in here with a set part and leave the interior flexible. Um, what it does mean though, if you put all the hair on, you know, if you part the hair deep to one side, it will look like it's asymmetrical. There's not really much we can do to avoid that because you end up with all this hair on one side and not enough on the other. So that is something to be mindful of if you're explaining this to your clients is that's just, you know, a reality of, of um, you know, when you move the hair around, when hair travels, it can create that illusion. And just if you haven't explained that to them, they may think that you actually um, um, gave them an unbalanced haircut or you gave them an asymmetrical haircut without asking them first or something. I'm not sure, so... You move your part around, and most of the time it's just off center here, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It's looking really good. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually a really nice balance of shape for a starting point. Okay, so I'm actually going to just do a little bit of texture now because where two techniques meet you get a point so there will be a little bit of um, a weight line here in the back but I don't do a lot of texturizing when it's wet I'm only doing some point cutting within the shape because this actually encourages movement as well and I want to see how much more movement we're going to get out of it. You can slice and channel if you like. I like to just deep point cut, making sure you don't disrupt that um, shape you just created. You want to make sure you go with inside that, not go and chop into that, that line because we'll just undo the work that we just did by creating that shape. You don't want to do that. Okay, last but not least, actually there's two more things we've got to do. One is we're going to now come back in here and we're going to knock this little point out here. So again, this is going to create movement again. Um, 90 degrees, it's layering. There might not be a lot, but that little corner that we're knocking out 
actually just again helps encourage the movement without going below 90 and into that graduation um, zone that we want to leave as an option for next time. If it's too weighty underneath, we can always do some um, slicing that will release some curl too and it also makes it a little less weighty on the ends. Um, but what it doesn't do is permanently change the shape. It, again, it gives us um, something to offer our clients next time. So for me, it's always about taking clients on a journey. Um, and I don't have an alamac of you know, endless amounts of haircuts that I can do. I mean, we're, we're limited by the, the hair texture and obviously to some degree fashion. Um, some things are fashionable, some aren't. Some people have preferences of their aesthetic and things like that. So if I go and do you know, a really elaborate haircut, it's like, well, where do I then go from there? You sort of put yourself in a hard place. So I want to make sure that I can always move the shape around and even with the smallest change, um, make a difference so that people don't feel like they're getting the same haircut every time because it, um, there's something that I learnt as a younger stylist that if you do the same old or same as last time, people very quickly um, can feel like you've gotten maybe a little bit complacent and you know, it's easy for you to just say, oh, because they liked it last time, to not offer change. I'm not saying that every time someone comes in, you've got to restyle their hair, but I think um, as a hairdresser, we should always offer change to people and not force it upon them. And if you offer it, you need to make sure you can actually do something different. And if um, you've uh, exhausted, you know, you've got a haircut that has layering, texture, graduation, solid form, bangs, fringes, this, that, well, what do you do after that? Like, you should um, introduce those type of elements slowly so that you can always um, make a little, little change. So clients feel, oh, it's a bit different today. Yeah, I like it. And then if you say you added some bangs or a fringe, as we call them here, um, if they um, had it in winter and they wanted to grow it out because summer was coming, you don't want hot hair or like hair on your face in um, hot weather. You don't want to be able to get it back to keep yourself cool. Elements like that are easy to grow out. So that offers change as well by introducing things that are really, really easy to grow out. The front, we want to keep versatile. I don't want to do too much, but I want this to just sit up here a little bit. So you guys are probably who watch the channel regularly. If you don't, please make sure you bash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Please share it with someone that you think might like this video because it's important that we share and help others either don't do what this guy does or maybe, maybe Adam can uh, make your life a little bit easier. So this we're actually going to have to do here and we want to go short to long because we don't want to affect the length down here like if we're doing a bang we do it this way. We actually just want to uh, shorten the hair on the exterior and leave the, the interior length the same. So I'm actually doing like shifted distribution all the way to the front in a triangle section and then we're going to just get the hair on an even plane and again just add some texture to it. Don't cut into your design line, make sure you go in between. Just going to shake that cut hair off. Perfect. I reckon we're going to leave it there. I'm going to do some that's beautiful on your face. Susan can't see a thing, by the way. She's looking straight into the, the camera. So I like to do that on purpose so they can't get scared and run out the door. No. Um, it's a surprise at the end. It's just a position of camera. So if she's looking like I can't really see them, she's moving head because she actually can't see anything. Um, but yeah, that, that's really, really good for a face shape. Time to do some colour, just like the cape. That's how. So Aussies say colour as in colour. And instead of saying cholera, we say colour. So we decided to create a, that's where cutter comes from, decided to create some, some hairdressing capes that um, we spell it like we say it. So this is a colour cape. Moving on. We've done uh, pretty much all the haircut. What's left to do is personalisation at the end. What I'm going to do with Susan is I'm going to um, cover her roots, so her regrowth. Um, and then what I'm going to do is go back and do some freehand lightning. So I've got some colour sink. We want something warm, but I don't want it to be like so warm that it takes away from the highlights we're going to do. So I've done um, Colour Sync 5N with 6M, um, which is uh, what we've been doing on Susan previously. So we're going to go and put
put that on the root. Um, always try and avoid overlapping because you're going to create banding. So make sure you just apply the color onto the regrowth area. I'm going to continue to apply this to Susan's regrowth. We'll be back and ready to start doing our um, freehand lightning. Roots are on and processing. What we're going to do is just some really um, nice weaves. I don't want it to like, I guess, get lost. I don't want to have to get a search party out to find my um, highlights. just going to process these so it's just a series of basically what I want it to be is I don't want it to be like traditional sort of um, foils I want it to be quite sort of peekaboo almost in the sense that I just want little pieces of color coming out I didn't want to have you know even stripes everywhere keep it more um, freehand and I think that goes with the whole casualness and that loose sexy sort of feel with the end, re end result we're going for so um, we're going to allow these to process and when they do I'm going to take Susan over the basin, I'm going to rinse it and tone her, and when she comes back, the colour's going to be done, we're just going to dry her hair off, and then we're going to do some final touches on the haircut, so I'll see you guys soon. Colour is done. Um, tone the roots. Um, Coloured the roots. We redid uh, Susan's uh, regrowth. Uh, you saw I went through, put uh, highlights in. We uh, alternated between slices and weaves. Now we've toned them. Always the colours that I use, you'll find in the description. But just to recap, I did um, 6N, 6M, uh, 5N and 6M colour sync on the roots. Um, we left that for the full processing time of 30 minutes. We lightened it with uh, Lightmaster and uh, Bonder inside with uh, 20 volt. And then we've used um, half 8CG, half 7G and some Copper So Boost in the colour sync um, just to really make those highlights pop. First product we're going to put in is Smooth Setter. A little bit of smooth setup makes everything better. And always make sure you keep it off the scalp. This is just through the ends. Grab a, a comb. Um, what I like to do is just um, pull it through with a comb. It ensures you're gonna get even distribution of the product. Um, then with the volume builder, you can actually put some of that in the roots. I would be just um, putting a little bit of, let's just say um, a golf ball size, because I don't want it to go crunchy. Like I want to support the style, but I want it to move. This is all about loose and, and flow. So you can always put some in when it's dry if you feel like it needs to have a bit more. But in through the ends again, and then just my fingertips, I like to rub in the top, some in through the sides, some on your T-shirt. <laughs> Who gets moose everywhere? I get it everywhere. I'm like Picasso, I just throw things all around the room, colour, everything. I'm using a GHD hairdryer and I've just got this thing from YS Park on it called the Curl Sock. So you can see it just stops the, the airflow. Um, when I'm drying curl, I always put the heat on moderate to high, but I have the fan speed on low. We don't want to blow too much air into the hair because that's how we make it fluffy. So I'm going to start in the back. A lot of things um, that do help um, with curl is you can have your, your clients look up a little bit. Then when you're working on the side, you can say head to the side. So it's always good to try and... Um, you know, use your, your hands to sort of enhance and encourage the um, curl. However, when it's wet, you don't want to scrunch it too much. Like the whole scrunching thing will actually make it fluffy. Once the hair's almost dry, you can actually scrunch it a little bit. So what you just want to do is just hold the curl with your hands, almost like you're creating like a, almost like a claw for it to sit in. The thing that I like doing the, about this too is when your hand's there, you can actually tell how hot it's getting, so you can regulate the heat on your client's scalp. And always dry slowly. The, the best way to dry this, it's worth mentioning, the best uh, way to dry it is actually naturally drying it. But we're not in the, in the business of allowing our clients to leave the salon um, with wet hair. So we do try and diffuse it and just explain to them, look, there might be a little bit of like fluffiness or a little bit of flyaway. That won't happen when you dry it yourself at home. So 
I'm going to continue to do this, and then when you see me again, we'll have Susan's hair all dried, diffused, and ready to go. This is about like now using our hands as a styling tool to enhance the shape we created. So I'm scrunching it underneath for a few reasons. I want to get all that little flyaway hair and bring it all in together to stick underneath and then just head up for me, Susan. Then I want to scrunch it around the hairline to settle down the flyaway at the end. There's a tiny little bit of smooth setter. So with a smooth setter in my hands, we're just literally raking it through. Just nice uh, color that's popping out there. We just, uh, again, want to have something functional. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of this. I think um, if we pull one side back, it's quite nice. And again, this is all about having it sort of less structured and a bit more fun. What do you think? You haven't really seen it yet, have you? Well, you have. A little bit, I love yeah, it. It's yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. I like, um, I like the color in and around there. I think it's, it's pretty cute. It feels really light. It's good, it's a big change. So I hope you guys are happy because uh, Susan and I are both 40 and you said I never get anyone my own age on, so there you go. So, um, you don't look 40, but let's be honest. Are you 45? You don't look 45. You're actually older than me. <laughs> yes. I just turned 42. I get asked all the time how old I am. I'm 42. Well, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, and thanks for being on the channel because uh, hopefully you guys liked it. And um, Susan was uh, going to come in and have her hair done um, when I got back from holidays, but um, something happened and my scheduling was messed up. So I said, hey, come in and we'll do it on YouTube. I'm sure everyone would love to see me cut your hair shorter and do a curly style because they ask for it all the time. And people say that I'm mature. Do you think 40 is mature? When I was like 20, I did. But now I'm 40, I'm like, if you're 65, you're mature. Like, retirement age is mature, right? Well, 60 is the new 40. Is it? Yeah. Is that what happens as we get old? We change the goalposts, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Mate, works for me if it works for you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed what I did on Susan's hair today. If you think that you might know somebody who would also enjoy it, please make sure you share it with them. Smash that like button, and if it's the first video you've seen and you're not subscribed to my channel, please do hit the notification bell because um, you'll get up-to-date information on all my uploads and they will be coming thick and fast. It's been a slow start to 2021 because I had a holiday, um, but there will be lots of content coming from March onwards. You will probably, uh, well, I hope you don't unsubscribe, but you'll be, um, you, you'll see there's lots of content coming out. So um, anything that I've used on the channel today, um, whether it be scissors or professional products or styling products, um, they'll be listed in the bottom. Um, video in the description and until next time in Canberra Australia it's um, Aviva Deci. See you mate.